Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have the January 2019 My Monthly Hero Kit. Sadly, it is sold out, but hopefully you can find some inspiration whether you have this kit or not. So let's go ahead and take a look at what comes inside this kit. These kits are always a great buy. Um, so you always get a lot of bang for your buck on these. They're about half the price of what they're really worth. So they're always a good buy. And so you're gonna start off here with my the stamp set. And I'm just gonna open that up show you what all comes with it. It's a nice big 6x8 clear stamp set. It comes with a lot of great sentiments and beautiful images. You can mix and match as well. It also comes with the matching dies. There are this two big dies in there and I'm just going to show you that I cut them apart with my wire snips and then I use my Marietta magnets. I got these on Amazon. It came with I forget how many in there and they're pretty strong magnet. They're fairly flimsy but a lot of people have told me you can just go ahead and um, attach that to a piece of cardstock and you're good to go. I will link those down below. It also comes with 10 sheets of red and pink paper each or no I guess it's five each so 10 sheets total. It also comes with the um, glimmer pink lacquer pen. So I suppose this is a little bit like Nouveau Drops or almost like Stickles but without the glitter. Maybe liquid pearls. It also comes with 20 envelope stickers. That one's clear and that one is um, not tr transparent. And it also comes with 10 vellum envelopes. These are beautiful. So a lot of good stuff in there. Five pink, five red. All right, so let's go ahead and get started for, on our first card. I've got five cards in this series, so let's go ahead and get started on that first one. I have got a piece of Express It cardstock that I'm sticking into my stamp platform, and I'm going to just line up a bunch of those stamps, the little ones, because there's a lot of little ones in here, the different pails, the different uh, flowers, and I'm going to stamp those onto that Express It cardstock with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Both are Copic friendly, and I've said it a million times that Express It cardstock is actually my favorite for Copic coloring. And I like the Memento because it dries quickly. So I'll stamp that out a few times to make sure that I got a good impression, and then I will flip my paper around and I'm gonna stamp it again. And I'm not gonna stop there. I'm actually gonna cut that paper in half, and then I'm gonna stamp it two more times on that paper so that I'll end up having four images total of each of those, and then I will get to coloring. But I'm not gonna show you the coloring because I, I, it is honestly the simplest coloring. I don't even use two colors for most things. I just put down some color and that was that. Uh, and where I did do some shadowing, I basically used the same color after the Copic had dried. So now I have my Sizzix Sidekick out and I am going to run all those images through with their matching dies on my Sizzix Sidekick. So it does take a little bit of time because I have to match all those up again. And remember, I had stamped those out each four times, so I'm going to have a lot of images. And I went ahead and did all that so that I could just go ahead and assemble my cards very, very quickly. So I'll run those through as well and then, you know, end up doing all of them once I'm done here. So moving on to my card panel, I just have a piece of Nina card stock that I have trimmed down to four inches by five and a half inches. I wanted just a slight border on the sides and I have some post-it tape that I have taped down and I'm going to basically, I'm going to put in a ground. I wanted to ground the images because I'm going to make a scene. So I have some Distress Oxide ink in the color Old Paper along with my mini ink blending tool. So I'm just blending that all across the bottom because this way when I put my images down they won't just look like they're floating. They will look like they're actually um, setting on the ground. And I will peel away after I clean up my mess on my glass mat, which is one of the things I love about the glass mat, it's so easy to clean constantly. I mean, I'm always making a mess on it and it always cleans up so easily. And then I will put that panel into my mini Misty. And sorry, my camera keeps going in and out. I'm not exactly sure why that's doing that. But um, I will put that in my mini Misty so that I can stamp out my sentiment. So I'm using that same Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp out the sentiment, and I'll stamp it a couple times, making sure everything's lined up correctly, which is the beauty of the Misty, or any stamp platform for that matter. You can always double stamp. And then I'll move on to the next part of the sentiment. It'll end up saying, wishing you a wonderful day. I love how you can build on these sentiments that came in this set. 
And so now I'm going to go ahead and just start assembling. I have lined up all the images where I want them to be. And for some of them, I'm going to use some liquid glue. And for others, I have, I have put some uh, foam tape behind them. And I will put stack, uh, stick those down with some foam tape. But I want to put down my back images first, just using that liquid glue. And I'm staggering them a little bit so it doesn't look like they're all just in a line. And then I'll start peeling off the backing paper on a couple of those that have the foam tape. It gives a little bit of interest if they're not just all in a straight line. Although a straight line would be fine too. This way your eye has a little, it goes all over the place with those images. And then for that final image, I'll just go ahead and use that same liquid glue to tack down that tiny little pot and those tiny little flowers. I love all the options that you have in this set for all the different flowers and the mixing and matching that you can do. So to make it so that they look like they're really grounded, I've added some shadowing underneath with the Copic W1. And then to adhere that to my card base, which is that card base that came in the kit. It's that pink card base. I'm just using liquid glue onto my panel and then I will center that onto the card as best as I can. Just eyeballing it. And for a final bit of embellishment I will use the lacquer pen that came in the kit. Just putting three little dots down and then I will tap those onto my class mat and that'll finish off the card. This one was super fun and I love all those flowers. Card number two is going to utilize that big, beautiful storefront stamp. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm using some Expressive cardstock, and I will line my stamps up inside of my stamp platform. Because with this big stamp, I want to make sure that I get it stamped out uh, nicely. And I am sticking a couple of the stamps. These are just the hanging plants. I'm sticking those on the inside. And the reason I can do that is because I'm going to use the die that goes with these, and it will cut out the center. So I'm not too worried about that. So I will grab my Memento Tuxedo Black Ink once again. And the reason I like the Memento is because it dries instantly. I don't have to worry about smearing. I don't have the best luck, it seems, with some of the other inks that are out there on the market. Um, I'm always willing to give them a, a second shot, but I just grab my Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because it's just the easiest for me. And I, I love how I don't smear, the because I'm very impatient. <laughs> So now I'm just lining up the dies that go along with each of the images. And like I said, um, I love that big store image. I colored those off screen because there's nothing earth shattering about my coloring here. Most of it is very just single tone. I didn't do too much in the way of two tone coloring except for a little bit on the awning. Uh, otherwise, I just use flat colors. Oh, and the balloons. I did do, I used R20 and R22 on the balloons. So it was very simple coloring, nothing too, too crazy there. So I'll peel all those back and get the dies put away so that I can start assembling my scene. Because once again, with this really neat storefront stamp, you can create scenes very, very easily because it takes up most of the front of the card. I've grabbed some of that red card stock that came in the kit, and then I just have a piece of black that I had in my stash just sitting off to the side, and I trimmed that down so that it could be like the, the ground for the storefront. And then I trimmed down some vellum because I want that to look like a window. So I will just use a little bit, and I mean a very little bit of glue just on the top and bottom, so that way that vellum can stick down. Any glue that seeps through will definitely show, and you don't want that. So in order to get my sentiment stamped out, I'm gonna use my embossing buddy all over that black cardstock, and I will get my white embossing powder ready to go. I'm going to use the Versamark ink that I have, and I will stamp out my sentiment on that bottom corner. And then I'll tap off the excess powder. And then I will use my heat gun until that powder is smooth and melted. You'll be able to tell because it turns shiny. And then I'll rub off all that excess. And to adhere that to my card front, I'm just using some of that same liquid glue I've been using this whole time. So far, I think liquid glue has been the, my favorite way to adhere stuff. It lasts a long time, and it does a, does a very good job of keeping things adhered. So now here to, my, to adhere my storefront, I do the same thing, but I avoid the vellum because, like I said, it will show through. There's no need to put it behind the vellum. 
And now I'll just adhere all the rest of my elements using the same liquid glue, sticking down the bike and the little balloons to try and look, make those look like they're attached to the bike. And then I'll adhere down the hanging plants as well. But after I'm done adhering those hanging plants, it just looks like there's this giant center part that, I don't know, it doesn't seem very appealing to the eye just to have that blank spot. So I do decide to take the little bird in the cage from the stamp set, and I'm going to stamp that onto the vellum, but I'm using Versa Fine Onyx Black ink. So I'll stamp that down, and I'll also grab the little musical notes, and I will stamp those around as well, just to make it a little bit more, I don't know, visually appealing, I guess. It just didn't look right with that center completely empty like that. And I'll wipe off one of the notes and then just stamp the one. And then that is going to finish off card number two. I love that storefront. You could just do so much with it. And I've seen a lot of really cute stuff done with it. For card number three, I'm going to use some embellishment mousse and a stencil. And I haven't done that before, so I'm excited about that. I took one of the card panels that came in the kit and I scored that at four and a quarter inches so it'll be a side folding A2 size card. And I'm just going to take some painter's tape and uh, you want to kind of stick that on your pants just so that it isn't as tacky. Uh, either that or use some micropore tape which I wish I would have done that. Thankfully I didn't tear my paper but I was a little concerned after I got it put down. So I'm just just barely sticking that on there and I'm going to stick my stencil over the top and I grab out my pink flambe nouveau embellishment mousse and I start putting it on there and then I realize whoops I should probably have taped down my stencil as well so I grab that same painters tape and I stick that down on the sides just using you know just small little pieces of tape because I don't want this to shift I don't think it will but you, you know better safe than sorry so I'll just use a palette knife and I will take chunks of that out and it, this um, I know that people have had some issues with their embellishment mousse drying out uh, this is a newer container this came in a kit so I just am slapping that down and it's still pretty wet for me so I'm just gonna make sure that when I do put it away that I make sure that my lid is nice and tight and that foil is still on there so I will keep moving this around until I get the coverage that I want and then I will peel that back and I will take that to the sink and clean it off. I'm not too worried about it drying on there. I don't know what it would do, but again, better safe than sorry. So I'll peel all my tape off of my card panel or my card base, and then I will take my palette knife and my stencil to the sink and clean that. And that stencil was the My Favorite Things Full of Heart stencil. So I'll set that off to the side to dry, and while that is drying, pardon my head, but while that is drying, I'm going to get my sentiment and some of the other pieces ready to go. So I've lined that up on my glass mat, and then I have a piece of black cardstock. I always keep this kind of just on the side of my desk because I seem to use it a lot. I use my embossing buddy to keep powder from going where I don't want it to go. I'll use my Versamark ink once again, stamp down my sentiment, cover that with the embossing powder. This is that fine detail embossing powder that I have. I know Hero Arts has some great stuff, but this stuff that I have is from uh, Simon Says Stamp. And then I'll just heat that until it's smooth and melted. And once it's dry, I will stick that into my Fisker's paper trimmer and use that wire guide so that I can trim down my panel so that my sentiment is good and straight. For my card, I've grabbed a doily. Now, I had gotten this from the Target Dollar Spot, but there is there are some companies out there that do have some cute doilies. I know Bow Bunny has some, and if I find those, I will link those down below. Um, and doilies, obviously, are not very thick. They're very thin. So I don't need a lot of glue. I'm just using very sparingly some of that liquid glue just on half of that doily because that's all I want is just half the doily to be put on the panel. I don't want to cover up all that work that I just did. And then I will set that down and then flip that over and trim off the excess. And then I will set that doily back in with the rest of the doily so I can save it for another project. I love doilies. I feel like those are very um, Valentine's Day. So... <laughs> felt like I had to put that on there. And then I backed my sentiment with some foam tape. And you can teach an old dog new tricks. I have grabbed out my T ruler so that I can line my sentiment up straight. And I put that down. And then I have some foam tape on the rest of my images. And these are the images that I colored earlier. This is why I did so many, so I could just start putting cards together. And I'm putting down my water can and my tin and my little 
box first and then I will start adhering the flowers down as well. I love, as I said earlier, I just love that you can mix and match all these little images. You can put those flowers with any one of those little cans or boxes. There's even some pots in there and uh, it just turns out beautiful and different each time. So that's going to finish off this, this card right here. Card number four is going to use that adorable easel die. I'm going to use some of the pink that came in the kit. And for the uh, inside piece, I'm just going to use some of that black that I've been using this whole time. I ran it through my Big Shot machine, and now I have some Hero Arts wood grain cardstock. This stuff is awesome. I will link that down below if I can find that. Uh, and it's just great. It, I thought this would just make a really nice background. It's subtle in the video, but really cool up in person. So that way I didn't have to do too much to the background. So that'll be my card base. And then for the easel, I'm just going to poke out those pieces and I'll use a paper piercer to get the little pieces. And that's just going to sit right on top of that card front. I have seen people make the easel itself a card, which is so cute. Um, and I have other ideas for it as well. But for the inside piece, I'm going to put that inside my mini misty so that I can put my sentiments on that. I'm trying to line this up as best as I can, kind of centering it, but I still eyeball it. And it's not perfect, but that's okay. You know, these are handmade cards. They don't have to be perfect. I like it just fine. And so I'm going to just work the rest of my sentiments on there. Basically, it's going to say wishing you a, I think, lovely day or wonderful day, maybe, or beautiful day. So there's a lot of options for your sentiment. I'll use my embossing buddy all over that and then my Versamark ink stamp down my sentiment. Oh, it's going to say wishing you a beautiful day. And then I'll pull that off, cover that with my white embossing powder, making sure that I tap off all the excess, and then I will heat that till it is smooth and melted. There are a few spots where the embossing powder didn't stick as well, so I do grab my gel pen and just fill that in. So there's a little hack for you. And once that's all dry, I'm going to adhere that down using some liquid glue. And then I end up um, setting that off to the side to dry. I think I stick it under a, a big block to make sure that everything is adhered down well. But isn't that cute? You could make some really cute gift tags with this die. Um, and like I said, you could make it a card all in its own if you just used the back as well, or you know, cut another one and made it a back. But isn't that adorable? So then I'll use the liquid glue again and adhere that down to the card front. You could use some foam tape or whatever you wanted, but I wanted this to be a fairly easy to mail card. And then I will start sticking down some flowers. So this was the beauty of stamping all of those flowers and, and coloring them all at once because now I've got all these flowers that I can just adhere down to all the different cards. And then I did put some foam tape on those two other sets of flowers. So I'll peel off the backing paper on those and that'll just give a little bit of dimension there. And then as a final bit of embellishment, I will use some of the lacquer that came in the kit. And I'll put a few little dots of that up top and I'm swirling that around so that it makes for a round dot. I didn't do such a great job on this one. So I come back to it and I will make it bigger but I'll just go ahead and squeeze a little more in there and then round that out a little better. I will tap that down onto my glass mat work surface and that will finish off card number four. I'm telling you that little easel is just adorable. For card number five, I'm gonna do some ink blending and masking. I am using these Avery Removable Labels, uh, number 6465. I I think Jennifer McGuire mentioned these in a video, so of course everybody had to have their hands on them. And they're inexpensive and they're good for masking, so I am using the big die, the big rectangular die that came in this kit, and I'm going to tape that down and I'm going to run that through my Big Shot machine so that I can create a mask. And then I'll save that inside piece, but I did cut this to be about the same size as the front of a card would be. So it is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And the panel that I'm using is a little bit smaller than that, so that'll work out just fine. So I peel off that backing paper and originally I try to stick it down onto the card base or the card panel, but instead what I end up doing is I peel off the, the backing paper and then I set it down 
So the sticky side is up and then I will just stick my Bristol Smooth cardstock down on top of that. So I'm cho I chose Bristol Smooth because I know that uh, ink blending works really well on this. So I have some, uh, this is Broken China, and these are just the regular Distress inks. These are not Distress Oxide, these are the Distress inks. And I'm going to use some spun sugar in the middle, and then I'm going to use some picked raspberry on the top. So I'm sorry that my camera's going in and out. It's been doing that this whole time I've been filming. I'm not sure why, but it did do that. Um, so bear with me. I just go back and forth over the top of this so I can get a good smooth blend. And I don't want it to be too crazy dark, so those are, that's the reason why I chose those colors, and I didn't go too heavy-handed. And I'll peel off my mask, and then I will chuck that. And then I trim down my panel a little bit so that I could straighten that out a little bit more. And then I'm going to stick that inside my Mini Misty so I can stamp my sentiment, which is just going to say, you're wonderful. And then I'll stamp that using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I have some stamped and colored images off to the side as well. So I'm going to start adhering those to the front. I originally stuck that box down right there in the corner and thankfully I didn't put it down too hard because I end up de deciding that I, I don't want it right there in the center or in the corner so I do pick it up and I'm gonna move that <laughs> no harm no foul so I'll just move it over a little bit and then I'm gonna start adhering the rest of my pieces so once again this set has a lot of great little images which are wonderful it uh, like I did in the beginning, I just stamped and colored a bunch of them and then ran that through my, you know, my Zyron's, not my Zyron, my Sizzix Sidekick. Uh, you could make these into stickers. That would actually be really smart. You could use those with your uh, Zyron sticker maker. I'll link that down below if I can remember to do that. But yeah, you could run these through your sticker maker and you can make little stickers out of these. And oh my gosh, how cute would that be? So fun. So I'm sticking some down with foam tape and I'm sticking some of those ones in the back just down with regular uh, liquid glue because I want to add some dimension at the front and I don't want everything to look too flat. But like I said, some of that I am sticking just to add some variation. And I'm going with the flow here. Uh, sometimes I have my, my sketches all planned out in my head. So it comes together really easily. This one, I just was sticking things down. I didn't have any, I mean, I had an idea in my head, but I didn't have like a solid idea. So I was just sticking things down as it came to me. And I still had a lot of those little uh, images left over. So I'm going to take those and stick those and save those for future cards later on down the road. But I stick another bundle of flowers to cover up the bottom of the watering can make it look like that's a really big bunch of flowers back there and then I'll stick some foam tape on one of those smaller ones and stick that on top of that pot right there as well and then I will glue down my card front and that's gonna finish off card number five super happy with how that one turned out so let's go ahead and take a look at the five cards that I made today I would love to know which one is your favorite as always those are my favorite parts of making these card videos I love hearing what you guys like and uh, if you liked this video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I have lots of stuff planned. And as always, guys, I do appreciate you stopping by and leaving comments and love. Bye, guys.